والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وصاحب نعمتنا أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة ثم يتوبون من قريب فأولئك يتوب الله عليهم وكان الله عليما حكيما وليست التوبة على الذين يعملون السيئات حتى إذا جاء أحدهم حتى إذا حضر أحدهم الموت قال إني تبت الآن ولا الذين يموتون وهم كفار وأولئك أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما طيب وفاهكم بذكر محمد وآل محمد In the hadith, Rasulullah says, Whoever wants to see me, or the hadith goes, Those who will not get the chance to see me on the day of judgment, those people whom my name would be mentioned, and they will not do the salawat. So, Maybe we should do a better one. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. MashaAllah. In light of the verse that I recited, it is a, basically, um, personally, I would like to call it an open ticket to uh, tawbah, to repent, to forgiveness. Because Allah promises that those of us, myself included, and I might be at the top of the list, when we do sins, the best way to do tawbah is to repent instantly. And the ayah says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ Tawbah is for لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ Tawbah is for people who do sins out of ignorance. Now you tell me, just, just a small example, who would ever think about or just have it run through their mind would go to the zoo and taunt a lion? Who would go and pick on a lion? No one would. Why? Because we know you just don't poke, what they, you know, the saying that says, don't poke the bear, right? You don't go and pick on something that's going to devour you. But because we know Allah is Rahim, we disobey Allah, no problem. But we don't go pick on a lion. We don't go poke a bear. We don't go and upset someone that is, you know, that's going to beat us. Right? We just don't do that. But I wouldn't do it. But, you know, but I would do sins. I would go and disobey Allah, my Creator. And his name, you know, I heard this one hadith that says, once we humans do a sin, the ground that is beneath us would ask Allah that it would open us and it would open up and swallow us alive. And the piece of sky that is right above us would ask Allah to strike, to strike us with lightning, to kill us instantly. Because um, according to what Imam Ali says, he says, don't think, oh, this, this sin is small or this sin is big. Don't look at this. Don't try to make a measurement because what is, okay, what is more haram? Is ghibah haram? Is nadiba haram? Should I do ghibah or should I not do ghibah and do namima instead? 
give you an, an, an imam says look at who you're disobeying don't look at the size of the sin question what what is more insulting punching or slapping your parents especially for the young ones is cussing in front of your parents insulting your parents saying a bad word to your parents which one is worse if you're going to go and try to find out which one is bad you have gone too far and you have not reached the point the point is you insulted your parent the, the point is you just said something in front of someone who's first of all older than you second of all Allah Allah's obedience is when you obey when you uh, abide and you follow your parents so it's not what you did it's who you or who we disobeyed so the ayah says يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ because we are ignorant we do the sins but then we do this we do the sins out of ignorance the minute we do the something you know whatever we did haram once we're done we realize we just made a mistake we disobeyed Allah that's when we start doing istighfar the hadith you know basically the gist of the hadith that I heard is is that you know we have the two angels one angel would record the sins one angel would record the the uh, the hasanat and one angel would record the sayyat the angel that is on the right record, records all the hasanat but from the mercy of Allah the angel on the right happens to be in our terms nowadays is the supervisor and the boss of the Sayyat angel, the angel who writes the Sayyat is under the command of the angel who writes the Hasanat. And so when we do a sin, you know, they, you know, they say seven hours, but you know, we shouldn't, I shouldn't do a sin now and wait exactly six hours and 50 minutes and say, okay, now I should do Tawbah. Tawbah should come instantaneously right after the sin. But in the event, we have this, what's called the grace period. We have seven hours to repent, to say astaghfirullah, to say, you know, to say, you know, um, you know a'udhu billah, astaghfirullah, atubu illallah, ask Allah for forgiveness. And, and, and it's not just any sin, you know, like I said, there is no size for a sin. This man comes to Imam al-Sadiq, salamullah alayhi, and he says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, uh, my, my restroom, is next to the wall of my neighbors and the neighbors got slaves you know and these slaves sing and sometimes I elongate my stay at the restroom because I like listening to the songs Imam Salamullah Alayhi says right now you go you shower you do wudu and you do as much salah as you want and you do istighfar for a person that uses the restroom and at the time he listens to the neighbor's music okay and an and imam says you were at a position that if the ghadab of Allah came to you what would you answer how would you answer Allah what would you tell him you were using the bathroom you're lying you elongate your stay at the restroom just so you can listen more and more and more now this guy is in his own house what about us? How about the best thing that we do? And sadly, and I see it nowadays, you know, you know people, have, um, technology is good and bad everywhere, okay? And, I, and sometimes I go online and, you know, I see my friends and I talk to them. And sadly, they're like, listen to this song. This song was sung back in 1970. And they give me a link to listen to this song. Not only do they do haram, but they also want me to do the haram. Okay, so you listen to music. That's something between you and Allah. Why should you go and broadcast it? Why should anybody broadcast that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Man sanna sunnatan hasanatan. Sunna, the word sunna, not our brothers, the Sunni brothers. Sunna in general is a path, is a way, is a tradition. Think of it as a tradition. Anybody, any human being that does a sunnah that is hasana, 
a good tradition. What do they get? When you do a good tradition, what is a, what's a good, good tradition? You go, MashaAllah, everybody has free texting. You get on your phone, you send, your te- you know, send a text message to your friends. And you say, you know, like this morning, and, uh, I told Sheikh, uh, I received a text message from Seattle saying that we want to get to 15 billion salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And to get to these 15, 15 billion, you have to do salawat five times, okay? And forward this text message to anybody that you want to, to do the salawat. So this is sunnah hasana. Imagine if, 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 if I was to send a message, you know, here in Arizona, you know people, you know, in, in New York, and the chain continues, the person who initiated the, this message, will get the thawab of 15 billion hasan, oh, 15 billion salawat and anybody that participated in sending the messaging because this is a sunnah hasana another example you burn a CD that has Quran you burn the CD that has the Quran and somebody listens to it 50 years from now there is no such thing as CDs right? I mean, 5 years ago CDs were so big nowadays nobody uses CDs 15 years, 50, 100 years from now, somebody says, wow, this is ancient. And I have, you know, how like, you know, so sometimes you see people with a, what do they call it, a turning table? You know, they have, you know, the, you know the, with these big discs. So, what is it? Recording table, okay. So, you get the CD 50 years from now, somebody looks at the CD and says, wow, this CD is ancient, but I have a CD player. They pop in the CD, they listen to Quran, they say, Rahmanullah al dihad the guy who made the CD. You get a Rahmah, your parents get the Rahmah from something that you did 50 years ago. What do you think Rasulullah is getting now? Every time that we, na- we say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his grave passed away over 1300 years ago or 1400 years ago, he gets the thawab. Why? Because he did the sunnah that's hasana, a good sunnah. In the same measurements, in the same measurements, that if you do man sanna sunnatan hasanatan, falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha. You get the thawab, and the thawab of anybody else that does this thawab, ila yawm al qiyamah. But at the same time, وَمَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً Anyone that does any... I don't need to explain anymore. Imagine the CD, you burn a music, burn music, you put the CD, 50 years later, somebody finds the CD, listens to it. Not only does he receive the haram, but the person who made the CD would receive the haram. It's the same concept. Who would ever want to receive haram? We all will go through this. We all will go through this. You know, when we get buried. Okay? We all will be buried. And then there is Salatul, you know, they call Salatul Wahsha. When I go to, when I am buried, and my grave is sealed, and my family leaves me, because in Islam it is haram to bury anything with the dead person other than their kafan. There's two pieces of fabric. This is it. Okay? When I'm buried, what would I want to take with me? No, honestly, think about it. Now, don't look at me and say, in tamu- forget about everything. La mu'min, wa la shaykh, wa la aishi. Barely. Hatta, one of my friends, you know, in hajj, in, in hajj you know, they, they throw the stones. One of my friends jokingly says, what's left of, from my hajj? He says, what's left of, from your hajj is just the hajarat. This is it. So forget about my hajj. What would I want to take with me when I die? A CD that I burned for my friends that all, ha- all has is music? Or a link to a song that was 70 years ago? Is that what I want to take? Don't I want people to recite Surah Al-Fatiha? Don't we want people to say, Rahimallah, this person, he was a good person? Don't we? This is all tawfiq. When somebody recites Surah Al-Fatiha for my soul when I am dead, this doesn't come out of, you know, it comes for free. I must do something good today 
in order for me to have someone who doesn't even know who I am to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for me one day. Who here recites Surah Al-Fatiha for Yazid? I ask you, who has the intelligence to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for Al-Wali? Abdul Malik bin Manwan. Who, who do that? Al-Mu'tasim Al-Abbas. All of these, Al-Hajjaj, Al-Hajjaj La'atullah Ali. Who recites Surah Al-Fatiha for them? Why? Because they haven't done anything good in their lives to receive Al-Fatiha. To even have somebody think about it and say, you know what? This guy did something good. Maybe I need to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for them. That's history. Who here recites Surah Al-Fatiha for Saddam? Or for Al-Qaddafi? Allah an Qareeb, Malik al-Bahrain. Who would recite Surah Al-Fatiha for them? For the tyranny, for what they have done. Believe me, believe me when I tell you this. The, you know, the story about the Shaheed al-Sadr al-Awwar, Rahmatullah alayhi, Sayyid Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr, when he was buried in 1979, when he was buried in 1979, three years later, they had to replay, they had to change the grave. You know, they had to switch him because the Ba'this were looking for his, his body because they wanted to basically annihilate him. They didn't want to have any remembrance of Sayyid al-Shaheed al-Awar, rahmatullah alayh. So some of the brothers who buried him, they knew it was coming. They went and they, they replaced him. They swapped him out. What did they say? You guys, if you don't believe me, what, look, go and look for the pictures for Sayyid al-Shaheed al-Awar. When you look at the pictures, the guy swears to Allah, he says, Wallah, when we opened the grave of Shaheed al-Awwal, we saw this cloud, what seemed like a cloud over the body of Shaheed. We waited for about 15 minutes to go away, and when we revealed the face of Shaheed, is it as if he has just passed away three years later. Three, three years later, okay? And they replaced, his, they replaced him. What made him receive such acceptance from Allah? How did they kill Qaddafi? Do you guys saw all the videos? How, what did they do to him? Did he do anything good in his life that is worthy of that, you know, his body will be remaining? Of course not. It all goes back to, like you know, like you know, now that we're in the remembrance of Shahid al-Awwal, rahmatullah alayhi, al Imam al-Khumayna, rahmatullah alayhi, when when Sayyid al, al Sayyid al Sadr passed away, you know, and you know how he explains and he how he mourns him, it just indicates to us that what kind of a being he was, rahmatullah alayhi, and the same thing with Shahid al Sadr al-Thani, you know, to the day, to the day, you know, people swear up and down that. You know, his, his grave, his grave, when, you know, those of you who have gone and those of you who have not gone, inshallah, will get a chance to go and visit the grave of Shaheed Thani. You will see how alive he is. Yeah, he is buried. You know, it's surprising some people ask, why is it that you, uh, you know, you Shia, you, you focus on Hussein and Imam Hussein, salam Allah alayhi, so much, thinking that if you bury someone, they're dead, but they forgot about the fact that sound travels through solids faster than it does through air, right? If you were to put your head, you know, back in the days, you know, they used to, you know, Ja'far al-Tayyar, rahmatullahi alayhi, wa salamullahi alayhi, wa karramallahu wajha. They say he used to be so good that if there is any battle, he would put his ears on the ground and he would tell them, we have that many Knights, people who are riding horses. We have this number of people who are walking, rajale, and and they are such and such distance away from us, and that's through the ground. They didn't know that when they killed the Shahid al awwal you know what was his response? His response was, you know, when Saddam gave him the choice, he says, you know, I'm gonna kill you. He told say the, Saddam is like, it is simple. You leave me in the prison, it is a good time for ibadah. MashaAllah. Look at how he thinks. You give me prison, imprisonment, good time for ibadah. You kill me, it is shahada. You let me free, it is qiyadah. You kill me, I will be a martyr. You, be, you imprison me, it's good time for praying and ibadah. You let me free, I will lead my people. And look at him. 
His books are taught even in Saudi Arabia. Bil Saudiya, they teach his book, Kitab Iqtisaduna. When it comes to uh, finances and business, Sayyid Shaheed al Awal, Rahmatullah alayhi, his book is taught in Saudi Arabia. The people who. So, going back to the verse. للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة We don't understand who Allah is and we disobey Allah. But then there is the exception. There is one exception as to the tawbah is this is one exception and there is another verse that absolutely seals no tawbah. There is no tawbah. This, this verse talks about those of us who وَلَيْسَتِ الْتَوْبَةِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ We do sins until يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدُهُمُ الْمَوْتِ You know, we see, our, you know, we're dead. You know, last time Allah, I'm walking outside, somebody shoots me, and the bullet gets to my heart, and I know I've got less than two seconds to die. I'm like, oh, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Too late. Too late. Because I know I'm dying. I know I'm dying. This, they say this, uh, this guy, and uh, they say this guy uh, went to Al-Na'man. Al-Imam Mahdi Hanifa Al-Na'man. He went to him and he says, I lost my money. And so Imam Abi Hanifa said, oh, it's simple. Pray, do Salatul Layl tonight. He's like, okay. So the guy, you know, does wudu, puts his sajada, and he goes, Allahu Akbar. The minute he does takbir, he remembers where the money was. Right? And so the next day, he went to an imam, and he's like, I found my money. He's like, yeah, did you finish your salah? He's like, no, I didn't finish my salah. I found the money. Why? He didn't finish the salah. If he didn't find the money right after he did the takbir, he would have finished the, the entire evening doing his salah. But he, he got what he needed. He got what he needed. So why should I finish the salah? Same thing, if I was hit in a bullet in the, in the chest and it's right through my heart and I see the blood gushing out of my heart, that's what I say, astaghfirullah. But if I was hit here, uh, maybe I'll wait after I'm done with, you know, with my surgery and everything. So this is the one time that tawbah is not accepted. That we're just dying, we are done. I am done, I am just about to you know, close my eyes. And now I say astaghfirullah. That's one instant where a tawbah is not accepted. When I said tawbah to the people who are the hatta idha hadar ahaduhum al maut, qala inni al-ana tubt, qala inni tubt al-an. Now that I, you know, I repent, I ask Allah for tawbah, that's one instant it's not accepted. وَالَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارِ الْعِيَابِ بِاللَّهِ those, those people who die and they are kafir. And of course, I know I won't be able to, there is, you know, how Imam al-Sadiq salamu Allahi alayh divides al-kufr and he tells, you know, some gentleman ask Imam al-Sadiq salamu Allahi alayh and he's like, what is kufr in Quran? How many phases and how many faces? Faces, you know, ma wujuh al-kufr fil Quran, ya Rasulullah. Imam al-Sadiq goes and describes what kind of kufr it is. But in general, al-kafir, when they are die, when they die as kafir, non-believers, it is a done deal. And that's why Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ يَا يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ In in Arabic there is israf. Israf is is when you basically you know how in like in lame terms is like when you go all out. You know how they say go all out. You know they uh, you you invite five people and you make food for fifty people. What do they call that? Israf. You open a can of Pepsi, you take one sip and you throw the rest away. That's called israf. You just basically don't care. Quran says, Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ you, way, you went way too much. You did sins way too much to the point it is israf. You know, those of us, or those of you, I didn't watch, but Al-Mukhtar um, Taqafi, uh, rahmatullahi alayhi, when you know at the end of the movie they say there's this one say one uh, 
And when he assigned, when he killed all of the you know the Mus'ab ibn Zubair, when he killed all of the people, who, all of the followers of Al Mukhtar, one of the guys who betrayed Al Mukhtar said, "Wallah, if these people were sheep, it would have been Israf." That he killed seventy thousand. Okay, and he said, if these people were not people, if they were, if they were sheep, this was this would have been way too much. And Quran says, "Qul ya ibadi al-ladina asrafu ala anfusihim." You you went way too much into sins, myself included. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't give up on the رحمة of Allah. Never say Allah will never will never forgive me. Who are we to speak? Who are we to say that Allah will never forgive me? Who am I to tell you that Allah will never forgive you? Even if that person is a kafir, even if this person is a non-believer, who am I to say this person is not a Muslim? Anybody. See, see, who do we learn from? Who do we learn from? We learn from Ahlul Bayt and we learn from our major scholars, right? We go to our ulama, our major scholars, when they look at even the people who despite Ahlul Bayt, people who, you know, like, you know, Imams, like Ibn Taymiyyah, he, he verbal, you know, in his books, he talks bad about Imam Al Hussein, talks bad about Imam Ali, Ahlul Bayt, salam Allah alayhim, and the love of Ahlul Bayt is darura min darurat al meaning if anybody despites, there's a difference. You don't know who Ahlul Bayt is different than despising, meaning you prefer Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, the person who struck Imam Ali and killed him over Imam al Sadiq. That is despising. This is when you hate Ahlul Bayt to the point of no return. That is different. I'm talking about someone who's a Muslim. Al Allamat al Hilli, rahmatullahi alayh, a major scholar, his name is Ibn al Mutahar. When he talks about Al Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, of course, not that I believe that Ibn Taymiyyah is an Imam, but because his companions call him an Imam, and out of respect to him and to his companions, we call him an Imam. Al Imam Ibn al Mutahar al Hili, when he talks about Al Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, Yaqul al Shaykh, al Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, or Al Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. But when Ibn Taymiyyah talks about al -imam, al -al Allam al Hilli, he says Ibn al Munajjas. But that did not stop Al Allam al Hilli, whose name is Ibn al Mutahar, from calling Ibn Taymiyyah a Shaykh. This is the kind of respect that we have. Okay? So I learn from them. I learn from them. Who am I to tell someone who says, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa Ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah is not a Muslim? How can we? These people are Muslims. So, al tawbah you know, going back to the verse, إن الله لا يغفر أي شيء. عفواً. قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah can forgive all sins. How do we know? How can I know? And with this, inshallah, I will seal. Although it's not the it's not the event, the night of of uh, of Al Hur, Salam Allah alayh. But if if you re read the story of of Imam Salam Allah alayh, of Imam Al Hussein Salam Allah alayh, and what Hur did to Imam Al Hussein, if we close the book, if we stop the story before the day of Ashura, we will send Laanat to Hur, right? Because he. He uh, bothered Imam al Hussein. He stopped Imam Hussein from going to Kufa. He did everything to stop Imam Hussein, right? But if we continue, we see that her did tawbah. And that is the kind of tawbah that is accepted from Allah. Asalullah li wa lakum at tawbah. Aqulu hadha qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa ila arwah al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimat. Wa ila man mata ala al wilayat wal hida rahimallahu man yaqra surat al fatiha. مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد وقد تنويه أنه الشاب